Hello my viewers and welcome back to my channel. Now in this video we take a look into the controversial and troubling aspects of birthright trips to Israel and other free travel incentives offered to various groups. Now while these trips may seem like simple opportunities for exploration, they often serve a more sinister purpose. We will explore how birthright and similar programs perpetuate the occupation of Palestine by fostering a sense of entitlement over Palestinian land and erasing the rich yet painful history of its indigenous people. Now we'll also examine the stark contrast between the curated idealized experience provided to visitors and the harsh realities faced by Palestinians. So join me as different people uncover the impact of these trips and hear from those who've experienced them firsthand. So stay tuned to gain a deeper understanding of the narratives behind these seemingly innocent excursions. But before we get into the video, make sure to give this video a thumbs up by tapping on the like button. And don't forget to be part of the conversation by sharing your thoughts in the comment section down below. Let's take a look at the videos. I will be right back. Have you ever been offered a free trip to Israel? If you have, I'm sure you've been tempted to go, but I'm about to tell you why that's probably not the best idea. Spoiler alert, it's actually a really, really bad idea. Welcome to our new series, Boycott Birthright, and other free trips to Israel where for the next 10 days, we'll be going over the Birthright Israel itinerary and exposing the harm behind it. So you might be wondering, what is Birthright? It's a free 10 day trip offered to young Jews, 18 to 32 years old, to visit Israel and the Golan Heights. But Birthright isn't the only free trip to Israel out there. Faith groups are often offered free trips to Israel as well as new members of Congress. There's pretty much a free trip to Israel for any demographic out there. But Birthright is not just a free trip. It's a tool to perpetuate the occupation of Palestine. Well, how is it a tool? It's just a free trip to another country, right? Wrong. But that's what we'll be uncovering in this series. Yesterday, the first birthright trip of the summer left from Chicago. Let's take a look at what they're up to. One of the main ways birthright perpetuates the occupation of Palestine is by manufacturing a sense of ownership and entitlement over Palestinian land and erasing the history of the indigenous Palestinians that have lived on that land for generations. It removes the narrative of the occupation and the violent ethnic cleansing of indigenous Palestinians. Let's take a look at the itinerary here. Right off the bat, we see the words, welcome home. This is that manufacturing of that sense of ownership over Palestinian land that I was talking about. Foreigners are being welcomed to Palestine as if it is their home, while in the same vein, Israel is exiling and murdering Palestinians on a daily basis. Let's take a closer look. On this day, people on the birthright trip visit Mount Carmel in Haifa. I want to tell you guys a little bit about about what happened in Haifa in 1948. On April 21st and 22nd in 1948, around 60,000 Palestinians were ethnically cleansed from Haifa by the Haganah and Urgun Zionist militia groups. On the 23rd, the city was stolen from its rightful indigenous owners and used to establish the state of Israel. People who go on birthright are not learning the experience of these Palestinians and not learning the narrative of the occupation and ethnic cleansing that happened to these people. They will see Haifa as a beautiful place because it is, but they will never associate it with the pain and trauma that was caused in order for them to be there in the first place. Not to mention that the Palestinians that were living in Haifa in 1948 no longer have the right to return to their land. They're not even allowed to travel there. By erasing this history and reality that still exists today for Palestinians, Israel is able to separate itself from its violence and rebrand as a beautiful, innovative country where people are able to have experiences that are so crucial to their identity that they'll remember for a lifetime. This is why birthright is harmful. It's great to appreciate the beauty of Haifa. Palestine is a beautiful country, but it is unfair to appreciate it without acknowledging and supporting the Palestinians that were ethnically cleansed from this land just 75 years ago. The Palestinians that still live under Israeli occupation in an apartheid state. We can do better by boycotting birthright. Do not go on birthright or any free trip to Israel unless you want to contribute to the occupation of Palestine. I've not been a supporter of Israel since 2014 and one of the big reasons why is when I was in Israel it is so incredibly just suffocating how much propaganda there is and here's the thing I'm from America there's so much propaganda within that but propaganda for Israel is at the core of its being I was there for birthright and birthright is 100% a propaganda trip to tour of just propaganda because here's the thing you really have to think please anybody any other jewish person who was at on a birthright trip think about why was anybody paying for a free vacation for you hmm 
because we love the Jews? No. Or because you're American and Israelis need Americans to side with you. So regardless, there's so much propaganda in Israel that it seemed overwhelming. Anybody that I would go up to would be like, welcome home. Right? And it's, it's so lovely, right? If you're very lost in the world, it feels so good. It feels so good until you started to hear how they were talking about Arabs. And I'm going to say Arabs as a whole. I'm not going Palestinians, obviously, but I am saying at the deep root of how much hate there is and how much spinning there is. Like, why does nobody leave us alone? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Why, why, why won't people leave you alone? You're on their land. Deeply fucked up in the head you have to be to support Israel. I'm saying that as a Jewish person, like I'm the target in audience and I don't know how people are doing it. I don't know how you stand behind 4,000 children being why like i'm sorry does the idea of can they not do a little special ops movement can they not can they not really like figure this one out if they want to go after hamas which obviously they don't they don't so i really need people who do stand with israel to wake the fuck up at what point are you going to realize that you are siding with genocide like it's not it's not a, a, a word people are throwing around because, oh, uh, no. People are saying it because that is what it is. They want the land. They've always wanted the land. When I was in Jerusalem, I remember looking at a map and realizing that technically I was supposed to be in the West Bank. Right? Technically, I was in the West Bank. But guess what? No, I wasn't. So I remember asking around, I'm like, wait, like, are we in Palestine right now? I was like, I didn't go through a checkpoint. What's happening? They're like, oh, no, they just they, they just uh, moved a little closer to another side. Great. Why'd they move? So it's been a weird day. It's been a weird day for both of us, I think. Yeah. So when we woke up this morning, we were staying on a kibbutz in northern Israel as part of the birth rate trip that we were on. And now we're in a park in Tel Aviv, uh, trying to figure out like where we're gonna stay and, and what we're gonna do. Um, Cause we got kicked off uh, our birthday trip this afternoon. Yeah, um, I think like it's, you know, the, one of the very first things that we saw when we got to Israel is we drove past the border wall between Israel and, and the West Bank. And like that image has just been like stuck with me the whole trip. Like I, do immigrant rights work like I think about borders and I think about border walls all the time um, and I think about like what they do to people to families and to communities um, and what they mean for people who who are separated by them and you know when we drove past the the wall for like the like third or fourth time on this trip today I was like I have to say something about this so I raised my hand and stood up on the bus and was just like, we just drive past the, the wall between uh, Israel and the West Bank. And um, our tour guide was like, yeah, thank you so much for asking that question. And like proceeded to go on like a 10 minute like speech rant about like Palestinians and how they're all terrorists and like smooth bombers and like all of this stuff. And it just felt like, like completely without nuance, like completely without any like, humanity for Palestinians. Yeah. Well, it was like that the entire trip. Like, we, the only thing we heard about Arabs and Palestinians is they're crazy, they're violent, and everything's their fault. And it was literally that black and white. And I just felt like I can't just, like, sit here and, like, listen to this rant and, like, pretend that I'm, like, okay with it. said. Like, this feels like a really unnuanced, um, you know, portrayal of what's, of what's happening. And, like, is there, are we going to get any more nuanced perspective here? Um, and basically the answer was like, no, there's like nobody here in like the whole, and like all yeah. of Israel Palestine who can like do that. Yeah, it was like, is there anyone that can give us even like a sense of the Palestinian perspective? And he was like, I don't know of any program or person that could do that. Um, and 
and yeah, just like it was very clear that like he was very committed to us only getting one viewpoint, and like that's just how birthright is, and take you know, you're just supposed to shut up and that's like part of the deal is like you don't ask those questions you like get your free trip if you like leave your values like at the door and like don't don't talk about it and so we got to our next activity in Tel Aviv and um, basically a bunch of birthright staff were there and they said that like we had to leave and that we got kicked off the trip basically for asking questions about like the wall um, right, we don't know exactly why because they wouldn't tell us why they kicked us off. They said we broke rules and regulations, and we said what rules and regulations? Like combined, we asked like five questions, and they just refused to say what rule it is that we broke. So they, yeah, we were like, why? Like, what do we actually do that's like warranting this? And there was like no answer. And at some point, I was like, if you don't give us an answer, like we'll just have to assume it's because of our values and. Um, I mean, they basically said, like, it seems like you guys want to hear a nuanced and diverse set of perspectives, and that's not what we do here, so it's not the trip for you. Like, she pretty much, the woman pretty much said that. And so, and the thing that they were, like, really upset about is when we were asking the question, someone was filming, but people have been filming, like, the entire trip, so you're allowed to film, like, anything else on a birthright trip except for when you ask questions about the wall or the occupation or, like, whether you can hear from, like, any sort of nuanced perspective. Yeah, and the tour guy was upset about that, and, like, that's a human reaction that happens, but that for that to then mean that we get kicked off the trip because somebody else was videotaping, or, you know, which has been happening the entire trip, didn't, didn't make sense. So, yeah, so we asked them, like, specifically, like, what is the thing that we did to, like, get us kicked off this trip, and they, like, wouldn't pinpoint anything in specific. It was just clear that, like, if you have values that you want to hear more than one perspective that that's like then birthright's not the place for you to be and um yeah i feel pretty rattled by it still um and we're like gonna figure out now like where, where we're gonna go and what we're gonna do and like hopefully we'll get to hear like some more varied perspectives than we were able to hear on that trip now, like military recruitment and big sales, the Birthright Israel table has become a step on college campuses throughout the world, but particularly in America. Are you Jewish? The students behind the table may ask you as you walk by. Now, some return from their birthright trips glowing, boasting of the sights they've seen and their newfound connection to a home away from home. Now, others return skeptical of their 10 days in a foreign place, feeling that their introduction to the country is missing pieces. No matter their individual reactions to the trip, Birthright Israel is increasingly polarizing on college campuses. But why is this? Now, since 1999, the organization Birthright Israel has offered all expenses paid trips to Israel to Jewish people around the world between the ages of 18 and 26. This really is a free trip. The organization funded by both the Israeli government and individual donors seeks to ensure the future of the Jewish people by strengthening Jewish identity, Jewish communities, and connection with Israel, according to its website. Now, in the past two decades, it has sent nearly 700,000 young Jewish people on birthright trips. The idea is that if young Jews have the chance to visit Israel during this formative time in their lives, they are more likely to want to continue Jewish traditions and to marry within the religion, since they will get a chance to meet a bunch of other Jews their age. Now, according to the organization, birthright participants are 54% more likely to say it's very important to marry someone Jewish than Jews who have not attended birthright. Birthright was a direct response to high rates of American Jews marrying non-Jews. Now, the vision is to ensure the continued existence of the Jewish people because of the very high rate of assimilation. A spokesman for the organization said in 2006. Now, birthright trips are usually organized by separate Jewish and or Israeli groups like Hillel and Amazing Israel, though they are all funded by Birthright Israel. Maybe people might be wondering to say who can go on a birthright trip. 
To attend birthright, you have to check a few specific boxes. One, you have to be Jewish, defined by birthright as having at least one Jewish birth parent or having converted through a recognized Jewish domination. Two, you have to be between 18 and 26, though they've recently begun offering trips to those between 27 and 32 with limited availability. And three, you have to have lived outside of Israel since at least the age of 12. Now, birthright is deliberately aimed at young Jews who may have little familiarity or connection with Israel. Now, birthright trips are known for their packed 10-day itinerary that includes visits to landmarks like Jerusalem's Western Wall, a Zionist heritage site, and the Dead Sea. Each day involves around 15 hours of programming, often outdoor activities like hiking, climbing, swimming, and riding camels. A medic and an armed escort who has served in the Israel Defense Forces accompany each tour group as their sightsee, party, and so on. Bethright is big on its educational core, which involves visiting institutions and businesses devoted to Israeli statehood, arts, and more. Every trip includes a multi-day myth gash encounter with your Israeli peers, reads the Bethright website. These peers are almost always young IDF soldiers. Despite Bethright's goal of strengthening Jewish identity among its travelers, the trip is not known for being deeply religious. Participants celebrate Shabbat together, but the amount of time that specific Bethright trips devote to religious practices and or education differs depending on the group that organizes each individual trip. While different groups can organize birth trips, they are all funded by Birthright Israel and follow the organization's principal guidelines. Now, despite Birthright becoming something of a rite of passage for American Jews, many oppose its existence. The unifying sentiment across nearly all criticism of Birthright is that the program's existence is an affront to Palestinians and spreads misinformation about how Israel came to be. Now, the issue begins with the organization's name and the premise upon which the entire program was built. The birthright. This idea is that by birth, despite having no familial connections to Israel, Jews across the world have the right to visit Israel. It mirrors Israel's law of return, which grants all Jews, regardless of where they were born, the right to settle and eventually become citizens of Israel. What some take issue with is that this right is not granted to Palestinians who were born in cities and villages that Israel has since occupied or settled. In fact, the Israeli government does not recognize Palestinian refugees right of return a stance that defies international law. Now, this means that a Palestinian born in the city of Haifa in 1945, who was displaced by Zionist militaries in 1948, would not be allowed to return to Haifa today. But a Jewish person from Michigan whose family has never stepped foot in or near Haifa can be invited for free via Birthright Israel. Now, Birthright's planned hangouts with the IDF among the most condemned militaries in the eyes of international human rights organizations have also raised eyebrows. The organization calls these meetings the most effective and transformative element in the Birthright Israel experience. Many also take issue with how Birthright is funded. In addition to the Israeli government, Birthright is funded by around 35,000 individual donors. But some of Birthright's top donors include billionaires like Shell Don Adelson, a big Trump donor who alone donated $70 million to the organization. Now, since its inception, Birthright has been accused of peddling state propaganda given the organization's explicit goal of motivating young people to support Israel and that it is funded by the Israeli government. Now, many take issue with the way birthright trips are conducted. Despite birthright's claims that it is unequivocally a political, the organization also says it is committed to the state of Israel as a sovereign Jewish and democratic state and up upholds its standing as the historic and eternal homeland of the Jewish people. Now, the educational aspects of the trip include little to no discussion about Palestine or the occupation unless they are brought up by attendees and no meetings with Palestinians or trips to Palestinian areas that are occupied by Israel like the West. West Bank, Gaza, and East Jerusalem. Now, several participants have recorded or reported extremely negative responses from birthright organizers when they've attempted to bring up Palestine during their trips. And this aspect of the trip has encouraged several Jews on birthright over the years to walk off or separate with their birthright groups in order to visit with Palestinians in the West Bank. Walking off is strictly prohibited by birthright and seen as an act of resistance. It's resulted in people being asked to leave the program early, but it is encouraged by groups like, if not now, a Jewish American organization against the Israeli occupation of Palestine. We have finally come to the end of the video, but what do my viewers have to say? Share your thoughts, your views, your contributions as well in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video as I bring you another interesting video.